Now let's get back to navigation. So again, we can click and drag in our background to rotate. Now if you want to move, you can alt click and drag in your background and that'll go ahead and like pan the object around. So if I want to rotate around and then kind of move it over, I can hold down alt and just click and kind of move it over to the left, alt tap, move it over to the right, rotate around. And again, if I want to move it over and then hold down shift, that'll go ahead and snap it. So I can kind of go up here, rotate around and hold down shift, move it back over by holding down alt. Now if I want to zoom, I'm going to alt and click like I'm moving and then while my pin is still held down, I'm going to let go of alt and that's going to switch to a zoom. So again, we can tumble around, we can hold down alt to kind of move it over into place here. And I'm just tapping on my tablet here to kind of move this thing around. And then if I want to zoom in, I can hold down alt and click like I'm going to move and then let go of alt and I'll switch to a zoom. Now you may think like, that's kind of a weird way to zoom. And there are other navigation options, but you know, this is the classic standard ZBrush navigation and you'll get pretty fast at it. While I'm tumbling around, I can, you know, let go of alt and hold down alt and just kind of zoom in a little bit and then zoom out and I can get very quick and then hold down shift to snap. So very quickly I can navigate around my ZBrush interface uh, and the object that I'm working on. If you prefer, you can use right click navigation and you're going to see here in my Wacom tablet properties, my bottom button is assigned to right click. And while I'm navigating in other 3D programs, I like to assign this top button to middle click so I can actually use my tablet to navigate in those. But basically what I can do is I can right click anywhere in my canvas. Now this is important because if I click on my background to rotate, that's fine. If I click on my object to rotate, it's going to yell at me and say, I can't sculpt on this because it's a poly primitive. We'll get more into that later. You can just tap off to get rid of that menu. But that's something to consider. When you're using classic navigation, you can't really click on the object unless you want to sculpt on it. And if you want to rotate, you kind of have to be out here away from the object. So again, you can click and rotate all you want or zoom in using classic navigation, just alt and letting go of alt. But with right click navigation, if you're using the right click button, you can right click out here in the background or you can also right click right here on the object. So that's one of the cool things about right click navigation. Now if I want to move, I can alt right click. And again, I can click right over the object and alt right click, or I can go over here and alt right click and move around. If I want to zoom, it's either alt right click and let go of alt to zoom, or you can control right click to zoom. Now the cool thing about this is with classic navigation, if I hold down alt and I'm moving and then I let go of alt, it's going to zoom in. However, if I'm over here, it's just going to zoom into the middle of the screen. It won't necessarily zoom in on the object. However, if my object's over here and I control right click and zoom, it's going to zoom in right where my cursor was. So if I want to zoom in down here or I want to zoom in to the bottom of this object, it will allow me to do that. Of course, I probably want to move this over a little bit and then again, I can control right click and just zoom or alt right click to move and then let go of alt. So that's classic navigation or right click navigation. They both have their uses. I use both of them interchangeably really, depending on the situation I'm in. But for now, that's the basics of navigation. Now, if you ever have an object, and let's say it's over here off your screen, you can't even see it. What you can do is you can come over here and you can hit this frame button, or like you can see the hotkey, that's F. So you can just hit F in your document and then I'll go ahead and frame that object. If you have multiple subtools, it'll actually frame the subtool first and then it'll frame all of your subtools at once. We'll get more into that later. Since right now we just have one thing on our scene.